Hello, subscribers and others. It's David Hoffman, filmmaker. I'm about to show you a clip from a film I made back in 1967 that is just a classic. Hilariously funny, amazingly insightful. I'm not complimenting myself here. I'm telling you about this movie. So what's the moment in time that I'm recording? I'm doing stories of New England for the United States Information Agency. My job is to find the stories that present America. And I'm coming through town, Stores, Connecticut, the college town, staying the night. And one of my relatives says to me, hey, I got a friend who's a filmmaker. Really? How old is he? 13. Can I film him? I call the kid up. Kid says, come by tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. I'm directing a major movie with 30 other students. I show up at 9 a.m. and there's Timmy Page, 13 years old. And Timmy is shooting one of his movies, major movies, as you're about to see. And he's just brilliant and hilarious and a bit, let me just say, odd. And I'm going to tell you at the end of the movie what happened to this movie, which is amazing, and what happened to Timmy Page. But think about this moment. I'm shooting from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., a shooting ratio of about 2 to 1. About half of what I shot is in the film. It's called A Day with Timmy Page. It's 1967. It captures an amazing moment in time, although I didn't know it at that time. Take a look, see what you think, and hang on for the end, and I'll tell you what happened to this movie. Hello, this is Tim Page in the Page basement of 14 Warwick Road, Stores, Connecticut. Uh, I became a movie producer when one of my good friends, Ken Cameron, uh, started to film an adventure film. Well, we decided not to do an adventure film. His was going to be 150 feet anyway. We decided to film a 25-foot film called A Little Fight with Comedy. Uh, I got a pie in my face twice. Michael Flynn, a good friend who you will see in a few movies in a minute, uh, got his pie in the face as once. Well, we took this film to the store, we developed it, and we were thrilled about what would happen. Uh, then it came back from the film shop blank. Uh, you may see parts of a little fight, but only as leader tonight. That's very good. Tell me, uh, what we filmed this afternoon, <laughs> describe to me the story you had in mind, because we didn't really understand it. Oh, well, we did a film called The Fall of a Nation, the story of children who have taken over the world. In this film, there was uh, the soldiers of Lollapopovia, taken from Lollipop, and Gamaby, Gamerica. And uh, Gamerica was losing. I was the boy. Betsy Page was the sister beloved. Rick Page was the um, younger brother. We were a family, and we are, in truth, a family. Okay, now for the close-up of the younger brother. Be talking. Now be talking. Hold well, it. You, you guys know. Okay, we'll be right beside you. Let's piece together. Talk. Okay, now for the sister <laughs> beloved. Hey, come on. Hey. Hey, <laughs> okay, okay, now get my face. Hold it. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Hey, now that was good. Uh, I never really use a script. I prefer to have a rough outline and then uh, just improvise. And like uh, I'm known to say uh, to the gang, uh, anyone have an idea for a scene? Uh, I never really use scripts. I sometimes, well, use. I use, sometimes have written a script, and I feel that it's a waste of tape because sometimes I've got just enough to kill the guy off. Then I find out I've got about 10 more feet left, so we usually end up filming characteristics, everyone doing things that they did often in the picture. Woo! Okay, now you're a set of can laughing meanly. Okay. Oh, this will be great. Action! Action! action. Camera! Cut! Oh, that's, oh, that's for, great! Now for a while, you'll be sneering cruelly. <laughs> Light. You get ready? Light. Yeah, I'm ready. Action! Camera! Oh, I do. You'll be laughing and slapping your screen up. And look mean. 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 Look mean.
soldiers are supposed to have Hold two it. Pretend you're a... Uh, can you get it? Light! Light! Action! Action! Yeah. Uh -huh. Are you uh, always star in your own film? Uh, in the film that you may see later, The Immigrant, uh, uh, I did not star. Uh, my little brother starred, and my little brother starred in another film called Lakers, in which I was a screaming lunatic. In our first films, uh, Mike Flynn starred in the first one, my little brother starred in the next. In Wilbrook Road, Betsy Page was a star. In The Affairs of Peter Lockers, I got a starring role in the Widow's Via, of course, uh, Anne Beto, who you saw as the uh, lady who kept jumping up and down and knocking kids over fences. Uh, Where did you Widow's get your Beer. ideas? Oh, I adore Birth of a Nation, Intolerance, the 1903 version of uh, Great Train Robbery. I love Chaplin and The Gold Rush. I found hilarious. Uh, I like Keaton a lot, and I like uh, uh, Lloyd, uh, not as a particular. I like Mabel Norman. I, I, in other words, I just, uh, I just like all the silent screen stars. I feel that they have almost perfected a fine... Uh, uh, almost a universal language when sound came in. <laughs> we'll film it slowly, but it'll be very fast. It's Kobe enough, Sam. Kobe, Kobe is a permanent filmer. Oh, he's not in the film at all. Okay, now, Tommy, remember, when I say light, it means nothing. When I say action, you start running. When I say camera, you're, uh, he goes on. Okay, get back there. Air it off the set. Where is it? Okay, again. Again, hey, back here. I know, I know. I'm Betsy. Ah, uh, don't, don't. Lights, action, camera. Don't worry, you're not. I got you. Okay, you'll go like this, and then Betsy, you'll go. And I'll go. And Rick, you'll go, and then we'll get a close-up of Tom. You know, he okay. happily, and then he comes. You're talking happily, and then he comes. All right. Right. Yeah, Action. Yeah, camera. Well, you know, uh, it's sort of stupid, but... Ah, well, 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 now, uh, now, close up of Tom talking excitedly. Yeah, we'll be right back in front of him. Me? Me? Hold it. <laughs> Don't, Don't smile, Tommy. Lights, camera. I have a lot of fun because I think up techniques. I like uh, every so often uh, taking my fist. I thought maybe it would be great to add a thrill. So I said maybe a fist at the camera would be good. And so, uh, so I said, Rick, let's have some fun. You are going to put your fist at the camera hard, you know, and it ended up something like this. And the, cam and the camera sort of shook, and then Mike Flynn would start heaving backwards. No fist would be seen. It created a perfect illusion, and the immigrant has... Without the immigrant, we wouldn't have filmed the fall of the nation, depression, bike grand, the widows via any of our best films. Now, don't you dare hit me! Right How am I supposed to do it now? I'll show you. Why don't I just jump over? Toby, them? does this create an illusion? Oh, really? uh, look to me. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. 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 I know for a fact that when I go to school, uh, I speak about my movies often as uh, not only the films I make, but the films I collect. And uh, so these people decide they, uh, they come up to me, even my worst enemies, they come up and say, Hey, Paige, can I be in one of your movies? I say, uh, drop by and have a screen test sometime. We don't have screen tests, but it gets them off my back. Uh, meanwhile, the ones that I do admit, I admitted Ann Bell, and I'm not sure why, because those were in my early days when I had 10 people. Now I've got over 30, and uh, a lot of them are ape-like morons. 
Uh, so not everyone is equal as an actor, huh? Yes, I've got firsts, seconds, and thirds. Uh, first, I feel I have good, uh, great acting talent, and these are uh, Ken Cameron, Ann Beto, Cindy Matkin, uh, Rick Page, me, <laughs> uh, Mike Flynn, and uh, let me see, I believe I have another, Amy Sandberg. Now, what is it about them that makes them better? Is it their, I mean, since they're silent films, it isn't their voice. It must have something to do with their movement. Uh, well, I used to like Amy a lot. <laughs> No. You'll go like this. Now? Hold it. Hold it. At the camera, of course. Camera, on. when you fall, don't land on one of these rugs. Oh, I like it. Okay, lights and action. Camera. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you haven't gotten any. Lights, action, camera. Lights, the camera. Cut. Oh no, he's gonna ruin the whole thing. Oh, it won't hurt now. Yeah, if I don't examine that oh yeah. I don't worry, he is our uh, stunt man. He yes. wants it. He likes it. Stunt man. Almost. Action! Look at Camera! Look at Cut! Look at Cut. Look at you'll die. You'll die at the end of this side. But you'll re reappear in the dream oh, scene. All right. Right. Action. Camera. Cut. Cut. Ow! Okay. <laughs> That's a uh, knocking Paul when Mike comes in and uh, shakes the water. Okay, go. Mike, now you'll hear something. Put your hand up to your ear. Okay, now you girls. Daddy, jump on Mike. Untie, untie. Okay, now get her untied. Okay, now you girls run away. Mike, you. First get the girls running away, then get Mike going like this and then run, okay? Girls, run that direction. This direction. Okay. Hey, action. Karen. Go. Be oh. up before you chase. Okay, now, and you'll push Dean off. After our first film that we tried, Affairs of Peter Walkers, we uh, decided to use the close-up. Uh, we made far advances in technique, not in story, plot, Filming or anything else, well, filming in a way, technique, but <laughs> uh, in this film, because we use close ups for the scene where, uh, uh, oh. The well, what made you use close ups? What gave you the idea? Why did you like it? Well, they were almost vital for this because in this church scene, uh, singers are there, and we had to get them singing, you know, and then we had to get the actors' faces who are getting married, you know, going. Wilbur Crow, time 1958. Well, we opened it just like Sunset Boulevard. A marriage. Me and Betsy. Neil Adams, she can. <laughs> the minister is eight. Singers at the wedding. Oh, boy. Oh, promise me. Okay, now she gets up. Woo, she gets his bouquet. Uh, here she comes in. Guess what she's trying to tell me? Well, if you couldn't guess, it's a baby. Well, about nine months later. I'm pretty wrong. <laughs> baby had a loose hand. <laughs> oh, here's a nice, happy family scene. Bye. Mike Flynn, just a bum on the road. Mike comes back again, and this time he's got worse things in mind. He steals the baby. Curses. <laughs> Let's go see the baby. Now, for some reason, everything in the scene goes nuts. This is a real old soap opera scene. <laughs> well, Mike decides to finish off the baby. Well, Rick delivers the services. That's the film. Before we show this next film, I would like to explain that we filmed the subtitles in green. Uh, this is a stupid act, but uh, Betsy wouldn't let me borrow her black magic marker. If I <laughs> uh, so we filmed the subtitles in green. They turned out poorly. This is one of our only films that absolutely positively needs a narrative script. Thank you. This next film, The Hammer Girl, was our best up to this time.
the immigrant cries over the body of his friend. He goes home to commit suicide. By the way, the suicide poison is blue sugar. Near the end, you'll see everyone wants to get a lick. This is Rick Page's best performance. There is no girls in If I go on when the future looks hopeless, I go to see Mirror Gold and not be bothered. Goodbye, Volectron. He tries to drink, but he just can't. He thinks. Here he is arriving in America. There's the room keeper. Oh, no. Hi, Robin, please. It's the worst subtitle we ever made. This fight was the highlight of the film. Get out of here, you guys. From then on, Rick and Mike would be our number one champion fighters. <laughs> Point. Now, here is our first technique. <laughs> Now, somehow, we don't know how, but a nail stuck into his head. <laughs> Meanwhile, he dies. Now he looks around the room. He feels that he is a murderer. Now we're back to the present. Goodbye. He sees angels coming. Then he knocks the glass in. He had to catch it. Everyone to get a little sugar. <laughs> the hat on the floor. Cast in page, Rick Page, Mike Lynn Thompson. The end film, January 1st, 1967. Uh, what about violence in your films? Uh, violence? Yes, and killing. We have a lot of it. Why? Do you feel this helps the film? I don't feel it helps it, but uh, we're not... Uh, you need more to be, uh, I think, a comedian than a tra tra tragedian. Uh, because, well, comedy, you have to have a gag, and everything has to be precise. But in these films, you can sort of... Uh, in a way, let loose, because you don't have to have gags. All you need is a rough outline, and then just... What about the recent filmmakers? Have you heard of Fellini? Oh, yes. Uh, I, my mom won't let me go to see any of his films. A day with Timmy Page. The film won 30 Blue Ribbon Film Festivals. It opened the New York Film Festival opening night. I'm there. Thousand people's there. Timmy's there. My family's there. And the film runs, and people are laughing so hard that the festival has to run the film twice so that people can hear everything Timmy said. Timmy Page, now Tim Page. He has a car accident as a kid. I think they were all drug kids at that time. Everybody dies in the car but him, and it changes his life. He becomes a music critic, major music critic, a brilliant writer, and just recently discovers he's asperger -y. He's an Asperger person. And he writes a book on that as well. Just an amazing person. I didn't know that at that time. What happens to Timmy Page, the movie, is very important because it captured something that the world had not noticed. That up-and-coming young people were taking this equipment, Super 8 and 8mm film and 16mm film with cheap cameras, no video yet, and making movies. It was the dawn of a kind of a user-friendly, YouTube word, uh, time when people began making movies like Timmy did. Timmy went on national television. Timmy had a Kodak commercial made about him. He became a star and I became a star in part because I captured this great moment in the evolution of user-generated film, now user-generated video. Although, as I say, I didn't know it at the time. The 30 film festivals that it won gave me money so that I could make more films. It gave me some prestige as a documentary filmmaker, and it kind of elevated a certain style, my style. Not fancy camera work, not a lot of time spent on the production value, more time spent on the people. If you found this enjoyable and you want to support me, which I hope you do, become a subscriber. And if you've got what it takes, become a patron on Patreon, www.patreon.com. One other thing, my merch. This is a piece of merch, but I have other merch as well. I'm very proud of it. Look below the video and you'll see my store. I'm trying my best to make a living out of YouTube any which way I can. A few of you seem to object to the fact that I'm trying to make money out of this. You think I'm pitching myself. Well, I am. It's a business to me. It's also a passion for me. It's also a pleasure for me. It's also challenging for me. 
but a part of it is money. I live in a capitalist society. I got to support the family. I have no money for retirement, not pleading, but just making you aware if I was independently wealthy, I wouldn't have to bring this up. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.